Hi everybody, I hope you're doing marvelously well. In this episode, we are going to try this. This is the Motor City Equalizer, built by Heritage Audio. I'm excited to try it. So we're going to demo a Motown song. Our very good friend, Louise Goffin, is coming in, and we're going to do Uptight by Stevie Wonder. So two things I want to talk about before we get stuck in. Number one, we're having a massive sell on the Produce Like a Pro Academy. So if you're seeing this and it's still part of the summer, in July of 2022, when this comes out, you can join down below for a special price. The other thing is these multi-tracks are all available for download. And what we do every week is we listen to people's mixes. So if you want to download these multi-tracks and you're already an Academy member or, or you join, mix it and then put it up in the forum and we will mix critique them. This has been a lot of fun to do this song. Don't forget to enter to win. So just a reminder, we never charge for shipping. So if you officially win one of these beautiful EQs, we will not charge you to ship it to you, nor will we charge any duty. So if somebody randomly emails you or messages you and pretends to be me or any other YouTuber or whatever and says that you have to pay to win your prize, it sure as heck is not me. So just remember that. I will make sure to delete any of those random spammy messages that appear below. So please enter to win. Click the link down below. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun to do. What better than doing a Motown song while using Motown EQs? So the things I felt really strongly about that I noticed was the 50 is beautiful and round. We're going to compare it in a second against um, using Poltex on the low end and see if we can emulate it. Um, the 130 is a nice area for bass guitar. It's also nice to do a little cut on the kick drum, which is what I did when we were tracking. So I did a bit of this, boost of 50 and a bit of 130 cut. The reason why I like cutting that 130 ever so slightly is because it allows room for the bass to breathe. 
320 is a good thing to cut out of kick drums too. Also out of toms, out of overheads, etc. Um, 130 is great for the body on the, on the snare. The 800, which is close to pure mid-range, I personally like on basses. It gives it a little bit of a honk, you know, dun 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 that kind of honky sound. 2K is pretty much it's glassy on vocals. I tend to use 2K sometimes a little tiny bit on a vocal just to make it just a little glassier. The 5K I felt was a little harsh. It, as soon as I got to like 3dB, I was like, oh. And I tried that initially on a vocal just to see how it would sound, and it wasn't digging it. Then I spoke to a couple of owners of Motown EQs, the originals, and they said 5K is a harsh frequency on the Motown EQ. There's probably certain things it's going to love. The 12.5K was nice on the vocal, just added a little bit of air and uh, didn't sound too offensive. Especially when you're boosting above areas that you're trying to boost specifically, you can drag up some of those high mids between those areas. So generally speaking, it's really, really nice, particularly in the low end. Like, I, I am not a connoisseur of this EQ at all, but that's where I feel like it shined. It also shined on the 800 to bring some definition and the 2K to bring things forward. You know, when I think of Motown records, I think of like, Big, fat, low end, not excessive because in vinyl days you didn't have, you know, 20 to 40 hertz being reproduced, but really a big glue in the low end. And I think that that's probably what this is going to get used for. That's my personal experience. Now, as ever, you can download the multi tracks. You can listen to see what he did on the kick drum, the bass guitar, also on the electric guitar. I put in a bit of lows as well, so you can see actually even thicker than I would expect on the electric guitars. Um, so you're going to get an idea of it. You're going to hear a little bit of the air on the vocal from the 12.5K. So it's in the box using some plugins going through the console. Now, drums, of course, are by the great Blair Sinter. So on the kick, gone a bit nuts on the 50 hertz here. I don't think this is dB. I think it's just indication from zero to eight. I can look at a manual later. I did a tiny cut at 130, um, just to leave room for the, for the bass to live. And Clark is sitting behind, he's about to play some bass. Big cut at 320 to scoop out some of that kind of ugly mids. And then a nice big boost at 5K. So that's the kick. On, and to be honest, on the drums, I've been loving it the most so far. Um, 130, so that's kind of kind of get the low end of the snare, the low end of the toms. Tiny cut at 320. I, I did a bigger cut, and then it just seemed to hollow out the whole kit too much. And then a bit of a boost at 5K here, and a bit tiny boost at 12.5K. I felt like the 5K needs to be kind of up here to be quite aggressive. I didn't like it that like that. So anyway. That's the kick, that's the snare. Two mics on the kit, both of them 44s, a Cloud 44 and an AEA, both ribbon mics, and then just took a plate reverb on the snare. So it was the AEA in front of the kick drum and then the Cloud pointing at the kick from over the floor and ride side. It's my favorite things to do. The kick, phenomenal. Pretty pillowy. Now what I did do is I cheated and I used one of my samples, PR kick, just to add some attack. Pretty light. When the band gets going, I turn it up a little bit. So that little extra attack just helps it cut through on the mix. The overhead, I put some verb on it, directly on the channel, which I don't usually do, but quite a lot because it's swimming in verb on the original. I use the MV2 and an EQ by our good friends, Mac DSP. And with all those elements of drums, you get this. I had the floor tom that I recorded. And again, I just did some 130 boost on that. So a little bit of 130, a little cut on the 320. But I also deadened it down quite considerably. If you look at the video, you'll see that we had a wallet on there, tons of taping, deadened it down. And I also used um, SBL Transient Designer just to shorten the sustain quite dramatically here and increase the attack. Because in the original drum part, I feel like the kick drum is playing boom, 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 boom. And with the way modern kick drums are tuned, it just felt like it was too much low end. But then if we brought the kick drum up to be smaller sounding, I think it just wouldn't, 
It wouldn't sound good. It's got to compete. We want to bring the idea of a classic Motown track, but with it being modern enough to sort of compete on radio, on streaming services, et cetera. So here's the floor tom part. So a bit of 130, a bit of 320 cut. See, it's pretty dead. Throw it in with the rest of the drums. Take it out. So it really helps, helps it move along. And then of course we had the wonderful Lucy, my daughter, playing cowbell. Put a tiny, tiny bit of 800, just a, a 1 dB on here, just to bring out the oing, the mid-range. Tambourine by yours truly. Again, reverb on it. Now the bass is where it really came alive because we did some pretty pretty aggressive EQ on it that really I felt did some wonderful things. So Clark, who's an amazing bass player, has the Getty Lee jazz bass because he was just doing a session. So he brought it over straight to do this session. And it was just a little bit brighter than we wanted, just a, you know, just a shade. Um, we wanted James Jameson and we wanted it to be, you know, that one finger James Jameson sound. So there's some 5K cut going on. Um, a little bit of 2K, I, barely anything. A little bit of 800, barely anything. Nothing on the 320, but a decent amount of 130. So that's the, that's the amp. So that's what we did on the amp. And I pretty much mirrored it on the DI, maybe just a little bit more aggressive. Um, 300 the same, little 800 the same, slightly more 2K, and that was it. So just, you know, it, the 5K cut actually was probably the biggest thing. And bit of mid-range in there is always nice to have, even though probably on the mix, I will shape it even more. But yeah, it's a great bass tone. Guitar DI, bit of the low end, extra low end on it. Tons of verb. Remember, you're gonna get these multi-tracks and, and see for yourself, but if I take off the EQ, pretty thick. EQ back on. So it wiped off that excessive low end, but I'm telling you, it's pretty awesome on the guitar. There's a tendency to think that the low end would be great on the kick drum and the bass guitar and all this kind of stuff. But I mean, ultimately, I feel like putting it on the electric guitar really thickens it up and gives it like a lot of weight. Throw in the bass. Now the original part was played by James Jameson on bass, who doesn't get much better than that. We had um, my good friend, Clark Sims, playing, and he is a phenomenal bass player. Also, a ridiculous funk guitarist as well. It was really great having you, Clark, be on this. Along with Blair Sinter, what a rhythm section. Absolutely incredible rhythm section. It's always a blessing to play guitar against people that have groove and feel like that. And some acoustic. So Jordan Katz played trumpet. He did a fantastic job. Our good friend Dave Rollicky, Mr. Dave Rollicky, played uh, the flugelhorn, um, the mellophone the trombone and the sax. Um, Dave is a monster player and has been on quite a few of our videos and I'm very proud to have him work with us. The piano and the whirly was played, of course, by the great Mr. Steve Magora, who is currently on the road. So he actually played it using his MIDI keyboard. So we didn't get to do any EQ on the way in with him.
Now, it's not a good piano sound, but, but I did add a lot of lows to it, which I did carve out a little bit on the mix, but... And the other thing about working with a Motown track where everybody would be tracking in a room together and stuff would be bleeding in, is that when you come to mix more dry signals, don't be afraid to add some verb. And I went cheap. I just used the D verb. I like the free D verb come, that comes with Pro Tools. Go to your DAW's stock reverb and use it. You'll absolutely love it. Now, the lead vocal, of course, is the rather wonderful Louise Goffin. For those that don't know, I've been with friends with now for 30 years. We think it's, we can't remember if it's 89 or 92 we met. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, 30 years ago, when I was a whippersnapper engineer at a studio and she came in with Andy Jackson. For those of you who might not know, is Pink Floyd's producer and engineer. Yep. And Girl Ann Dorsey um, playing bass, who was Debbie Bowie's um, bass, bass player and singer as well. She would sing Under Pressure with, uh, with Bowie. Really incredibly talented. And I believe, we can't remember, we think it was the Stacey Brothers, so who are England's like top session players. Phenomenal. Jeremy Stacey, of course, is a very, very famous drummer. Baby, everything is all right. Uptight, out of sight. Baby. Just came out great. A double, really super tight double. I printed all the effects for you. Well, actually, Eric printed all the effects. So you've got the H3000. You've got our echo plate and our vocal magic from our PCM90, so don't forget to download those and use them. Um, the backgrounds was a combination of our good friend, Caitlin Carlos, who works with us on a lot of stuff. She does a lot of the scripts with me uh, for some of those incredible videos. She's a musicologist, a professor at UCLA, and also incredibly talented singer. That was blended with, of course, our good friend Steve Magora, and you get this. So just a great blend of voices. So you're going to have a lot of fun with these multi-tracks. So download them, mix them. The mix is going to be in there. You do what you want to make this great. Okay, so let's try a couple of things on the mix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the kick drum. The insert I've got at the moment is pushing to an API 560. So I'm gonna take out the 560 and I'm gonna insert this instead and we're gonna see how it sounds. So here's a little loop. This is the live kick drum with the AEA 44 on it and the little PR kick sample. So here's the two things together, we're gonna loop it. So that is the insert with the API EQ on it. So what I've done on the API is I've actually cut some 16K, which is kind of meaningless because it won't be much, but I did. Um, it's flat on all the high mids. That's all set to the center. And then on the low mid at 250 and also 125, I've cut a little bit. And the 125, like I was explaining with the 130 on the Motown EQ, I cut that because I want the bass guitar to live in there. I don't pull it out entirely. I just do a little dip so there's some low end for the bass to fill it in. Then I'm boosting the uh, 63. And again, you know, I've cut the 250. So a bit of low mid cut, a bit of low cut, and a boost at 63. That's the EQ. So we can probably emulate that fairly easily. So let's just press the loop. Okay. It's just like a little extended low end that it's giving it, just a tiny amount. We're hitting the desk pretty hard. You can see the red light coming on. I'm not afraid. So yeah, it's just giving a little extra bloom. I wonder if we can get even more using the Motown EQ. So now we have the top EQ in, let's press play. It's out at the moment, but it's inserted. Put it in. So let's do some 130 cut. Okay, quite dramatic. I say DB out. 
this 3db out With these huge speakers, I can feel the low end. I'm gonna crank it. It's massive. Okay, so that it's really massive, but it's very, very rounded and beautiful. Very nice indeed. Put out some 320. makes a huge difference in that snare bleed. Well, it goes through that oh. Okay, I'm gonna try some 2K for the snap. Usually I do 2.5, so 2K is close. Oh yeah. Quite dramatic. So is it before? And after. Okay, let's try in the track. Just before. Baby, everything is alright. Uptight, out of sight. Baby, everything is alright. Great. I think so talking to Dave and talking to other people that own Motown EQs, I think what they all like about it is the sort of smoothness and the musicality of it. Um, we've done 4 dB of cut, 3 dB of cut, 5 dB of boost. Um, so that's on the 50 to boost. Cut 3 dB at 130. Um, 320 cut, 4 dB, 2K, uh, 3 dB boost. And that's just giving us a bit more snap bit of low mid cut, which is always nice on a kick drum, and a bit of cut for a bass guitar to sit. Let me show you something. I'm gonna put the bass guitar playing against this with the EQ out and bring it in, see if you can hear what I'm talking about. Bring the EQ in. Out. Back in. I love that subtle 130 cut. And again, when you're mixing and creating music like this, which is not all about super scooped, like EDM or metal kind of like paint by numbers, jigsaw puzzle mixing, you know, where you're deliberately cutting out frequencies to insert other instruments because you're trying to get this massive wall of sound, totally understandable. Um, you know, in those genres. But in this instance, we're carving out subtleties for different instruments to live. And that's why people love EQs like this. That's why they buy Poltex. That's why they buy the Langevins, the Altex, all these kinds of classic EQs, just to do subtle, beautiful things that are, I hate using this word because it's a weird word to use when it comes to hardware, but musical, things that sound musical. I think this is why people are going to buy this and why they buy other kinds of passive EQs. Okay, let's put this on the bass guitar, seeing as we were talking about the bass guitar. So this one's gonna be a tough one to beat. I don't know if it will beat it. I think it will just be different, but maybe it will. The Poltec that we're, we're gonna swap out for is a 500 series with an API op amp in it. And it is phenomenal sounding. I will take the insert on and off and you'll hear what it does. If this can get close, even close, it will be fantastic. This Poltec lives on my bass guitar in every mix that we do. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here's the bass guitar, channel nine. Inserts in, listen with it off. Okay, it's providing volume, but not only is it providing volume, listen to that. Off. Phenomenal. So, we're gonna put the Motown EQ on and see if we can get pretty close to that. Now, what I've got here is I've got a lot of boost going on 
at 100 hertz. I'm also attenuating it. Um, I've also got some 3K going on and a lot of boost on that. So what it does is it gives me two things. The 3K gives me the articulation of the fingers you know, or the pick and the 100 hertz gives me that beautiful bloom on the low end. So listen out for that. I'm turn it off. It's all mids. Put it in. Now you hear the grit of the fingertips on it and you hear the low bloom. So let's see if we can get a similar effect using the Motor City EQ. Okay, so let's insert it. Um, we don't have the 100 boost, we have 130 and 50, so I'm gonna use a combination of the two. Nice, that's the 130, 5 dB. 3 dB at 50, take it out. Out, you can tell, and in. So interesting, it's, it's not quite the same as grabbing a 100 hertz boost on the Poltec, which is very focused. Also, there's an attenuator on the Poltec where I can kind of tune it in, focus it more around about 100 hertz. But between those two things, the 15 and 130, I get really good low end. So here's bass and drums together. So I'm taking the EQ out, so have a listen. The EQ in. Now, one thing we didn't do on the bass is we didn't add the 3K that we had on the Poltec. Growl. Take it out. Back in. Just for schnitz and schniggles, I'm gonna put some 5K on. Not a lot of 5K to pull out, don't need it. The 2K did, did well, maybe a couple of dB of five, one less than the two. Out. Back in. I've got to say, um, I do love the Poltex, absolutely do. I think this is a different sound on the low end that is equally as good, but different. I'm gonna get one of these, and one of these is going to be a chance for you to win. So don't forget to enter to win one of these beautiful EQs. I can see this, it's probably gonna go, well, is there any room over there? It's gonna go out somewhere close, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use it for printing EQ low end on guitars on the way in, a bit of 320, a bit of 130, a little bit of 50 on the kick, and I think this, and probably some 5K, even though it's a little harsher, maybe some 5K on some guitars when I'm trying to get them to really bite. And then have this also as an alternate when I want a different kind of bass sound. It's definitely a very usable EQ. And as you can tell, I love the world of hybrid mixing, of mixing in the box, using plugins, but also using hardware. It also helps that, you know, when I printed the bass, I was already doing a lot of this kind of stuff down there, and this is just grabbing it and double doing it. It sounds really thick. Really, really nice. Fantastic. So don't forget, you can enter to win. Just click a link down below there. Now, two things that are really, really important. We never charge for shipping. We never charge for anything. If you've won the prize, it will be shipped to you for free. So if you get anybody scamming you and telling you that you've won, and it does happen, people put like fake messages down below that people have won. First of all, we email you from Produce Like a Pro, 
and you tell us where to send the prize and we send it. You don't have to give us any money to win. That is a scam that's been going on all over YouTube. So just watch out. If anybody's trying to scam you, trying to get you to pay for prizes, it is not us. We have never charged. We even pay the duty. And trust me, it's been expensive when shipping to Brazil and Greece and Australia as well. It's quite expensive. But it doesn't matter where you are. We will pay the shipping or pay the duty. So thanks ever so much, Heritage, for letting us give one of these away for free. And thanks ever so much, Heritage, for letting us demo them. Um, I really enjoyed this. This is pretty freaking awesome. Enter to win. Thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to download the multitracks and mix it for yourself. Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Avi de Zen. Au revoir. Adios. Tschüss. Goodbye. Ciao. Adios.